Our next question comes from Kelvin out of Buchanan, Virginia. He writes, Is it sinful to pledge allegiance to the flag, and why do some Christians liken this to idolatry? Well, um, they use a passage, and I'm turning there right now from uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and it's uh, I think it's a, a text that's used out of context, and sometimes if you take a verse out of its context, you can make the Bible mean a lot of things. So let me just pause and address some definitions here. When we say the word pledge, it simply means a promise. And there's nothing wrong with making a promise. When a couple gets married, they exchange pledges. They exchange vows. They exchange promises. And they'll say, you know, I promise you my faithfulness. Uh, And they used to say when I was uh, a young man, I plight thee my troth. We don't say that anymore, but uh, if we use traditional vows, we might say, I promise you a plight is a promise or a pledge. I solemnly pledge thee, or an archaic term for you, my troth or my faithfulness. So it's a solemn promise to another person. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's really what marriage is. It's a public commitment to live a separated life as a couple uh, in what we would call holy matrimony. And so when a witness stands in a courtroom, he promises to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help him God. That's a promise that he is making. Um, and so when we pledge allegiance to the flag, uh, a flag is simply symbolic of the nation to whom you are promising your allegiance. Is it wrong to promise allegiance to a nation? Certainly not. Why? Because Acts 17 indicates that God is the one who formed nations. He created the boundaries. And sadly, we're living in a nation right now where there is seemingly no boundary. And millions of people have come in through our southern border, and now some are coming through the northern border. And we're talking about 152 nations of the world. And if the stats that I heard last week were correct, the principal nations, you think, oh, Mexico, actually, Venezuela is number one, Russia is number two, China is number three, and Iran is number four. And those are the people whom we know of that didn't slip over the border without getting caught. So there's nothing wrong with having a nation. Uh, And so to pledge one's allegiance to a country is basically to promise that you are going to recognize that nation's rule. And God doesn't, you know, speak against nations and against government. In fact, God established three institutions. He established the family, he established the government, and he established the church. And so you don't want to live in a nation without government because one of the functions of government is they are a minister of God, Uh, to put down evil and to put up good. And so to pledge one's allegiance to a country is basically to subject yourself to that country's rule, to promise to abide by its laws. And that's what we ask people to do when they become, you know, citizens, Uh, that they're pledging their allegiance to the um, Constitution of the United States of America. And Paul, the apostle, taught that we should be a good citizen. I've turned here to Titus 3. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed. Peter will say, look, honor all people, love the brotherhood, uh, fear the Lord. And then he'll say, honor the king. Now, there is an exception to that, obviously. You find an example in Acts 5. I have a sermon on God, governments, and guns. And in that, I walk through when it is proper to disobey a nation, and that is if the nation asks you to do something that's in defiance of a higher authority, namely God's. So the apostles in Acts 5.29 said, we must obey God rather than men. But Jesus plainly said, when asked about taxes, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. He is recognizing that civil governments play an important role. You don't want to live in a nation where there's not a government that is carrying out its function to put down evil and to praise good. Sadly, uh, there are some evil people in the world and some who have been involved in uh, those states where district attorneys are not appointed, but they run for the office 
And a lot of people like George Soros have put up a lot of money to get people into office who will basically not do what the government says or what God says a government is to function as. And that's sad. Um, and so you have more and more lawlessness because the government's just looking the other way like they don't care. Oh, you can steal up to $1,000 in some states, and it's only a misdemeanor. And, um, you know, this is, this is a problem that we have. But the verse that's often used, and Jehovah's Witness love to use this, and I've turned here to Matthew 5. It's in the Sermon on the Mount, and there it says, Jesus is speaking, he says, but I say to you, make no oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God. And if you know the context, he's talking about making a flippant oath. And so letting Scripture interpret Scripture, he's not forbidding all oath-taking. God himself, in Hebrews 6, because he can swear by no one greater than himself, swears by himself. He does the same thing in Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Paul makes a promise. He makes an oath in Acts chapter 18. And so pledging loyalty to a nation is not the same even as taking an oath because in one sense, a a pledge by definition is a solemn promise where an oath carries a little extra weight, a little more punch and steel to it, and that it's an appeal to God. But I would say pledging allegiance to the flag is actually helping to obey what God calls you to, assuming the flag represents that nation and without violating God honoring principles. Now, obviously the Nazi flag, the swastika um, represented an evil nation that was uh, elevating the Aryan race and in demoting other races, especially Jewish people to the point where they wanted them exterminated. But our flag doesn't stand for that. And so Paul says in Romans 13 and verse seven, Render to all what is due them, tax to whom taxes due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and then he'll say, honor to whom honor. So we are to honor the king, as Peter said. We're to show uh, honor to our politicians. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't speak out against the evil that they may, uh, you know, wave in front of our faces. But without disrespecting the office, we still need to speak on the moral issues. So a pledge of allegiance to the flag is simply a way of honoring, respecting our country. And that is something we're commanded to do. So there's nothing in Scripture that would forbid the pledging of allegiance to the flag. In fact, if there's anything in Scripture, it would say just the opposite. If you have some Christian who's obstinate and says, well, I won't pledge allegiance to the flag— He's basically saying, I'm dishonoring the country that I'm a part of. And he's not to do that, again, unless that country is asking you to do something that God forbids. Not to mention you're dishonoring all the people who went before you, sometimes at the highest cost possible of giving their lives, uh, so that you can enjoy the freedom where you can even say things like that. Um, So this is something that comes out of Jehovah's Witness. It's a false cultish religion. Um, And sadly, some evangelical Christians have picked up on it under the guise of spirituality. But if anything, they're, they're breaking the tenor and the spirit of Holy Scripture. Dr. Carl Brogy answers your questions about the Bible and living the Christian life Tuesday mornings at 11 on The Light, 88.7 FM, and online around the world at wagp.net.